Chem 2211, Thin Layer Chromatography, or TLC, Identification of Unknown Mixtures. So with today's lab, we're going to be taking a number of vials containing our unknown analgesic mixtures. We're going to write these codes down on our data sheet in just a moment. And we're going to pair these unknown code numbers to our analgesic mixture composition table. We want to give each one of those unknown codes its specific and correct identifying name. We're going to do that using both TLC mixtures and spotting mixtures created from these powders. If I open up my first powder here, you can see that this is just a mixture of different crushed powders. And that's true for all the vials that we have in front of us. We're going to pair that with four vials of known analgesic components. We have acetyl salicylic acid, aka aspirin, caffeine, acetaminophen, and ibuprofen. And if we look at our composition table over here, we can see that each one of these mixtures, starting out with the first one, Anastasia's analgesic elixir, it is composed of acetaminophen and acetyl salicylic acid. Excedrin, acetaminophen, caffeine, and acetyl salicylic acid, and so on and so forth. So these are the known active ingredients in these analgesic mixtures. So we're going to spot these known solutions onto one plate. We're then going to make up a series of spotting solutions for our unknowns. We're going to spot those on two additional plates and compare the RF values to help us identify our unknown codes. So what I'm doing right now is making sure that I've written down all of my unknown codes corresponding to unknown number one to number six. I just went left to right and now I've got all these labeled out, and that's going to correspond to my TLC plates that I create in a little bit. And of course, my data sheet here, I'm going to be drawing in uh, the developed TLC plates that I get after performing the experiment. Now we have to make up our spotting solutions, so we're going to stay very organized. We have our lanes marked. This is test tube one through six, and that will correspond, of course, to our unknowns. I'm going to take a spatula. Take unknown number one, right? Make sure that we're corresponding. Have to be very careful. And we'll take a look at the powder. Yellowish white powdery substance with a little bit of chunks. I'm going to go to the powdery portion right here, and we're just going to take the tip of a spatula and we're going to put it into our test tube. Now, in between, as we're getting the, the powder set, we have to make sure to clean our spatula. We don't want any of these powders to mix. That can cause serious problems with the reliability of our TLC plates or our TL, TLC spotting solutions. So I'm wiping this off with a chem wipe and ethanol. Now let's go to unknown number two checking to make sure that it matches with my data sheet. Again, the tip of a spatula into test tube number two. Cleaning the spatula again. Number On to number four, six, four, one, two, three, five, D. 
Now take a look at this powder. We can see some maroon slash reddish orange casing. That's actually the outer casing of the pill that we ground up to make this mixture. So this is part of the inactive ingredients. What we're looking at with our TLC is just the active analgesic components. But this is some of the inactive ingredients that are part of the pills and analgesic uh, mixtures that you can buy at the store. So we'll get a little bit of that powder. If you get some of the peel or some of the outer coating into your test tube, it will not most likely dissolve, but that's okay. You just need enough powder to make a spotting solution. So that's number four. Number five. You can see a little bit of that same outer casing. And then finally, number six. Okay. This is a nice uniform white powder. It can still be a mixture of several powders, but their appearance and consistency are the same. All right, so now we've got all of our powders in place. We're gonna dilute these with approximately one milliliter of a one-to-one -one methylene chloride and ethanol solution. That's what we're looking at here. So one-to-one -one methylene chloride ethanol solution. This is a graduated pipette. Our one milliliter line is here. This doesn't have to be exact, but we're gonna try and make the same volume solution as much as we can between all six of these. This solution is what is going to allow us to use capillary action in our TLC spotters to apply these to the TLC plates. I came into contact with a little bit of powder on the tip of this pipette, so I'm going to make sure that I clean it off. Again, I don't want any cross-contamination. And finally, number six. All right, so let's take a look real quick. I'm going to give these a swirl. And we can take a look at these different solutions. Okay, so we've got some excess powder. Not everything's going to dissolve. So a pale yellow for number one. We've got a brighter sort of canary yellow for number two. A white translucent mixture for number three. Again, doesn't matter, we can see grains of our powder here, but we have enough dissolved that we'll be able to spot it very easily. These will be fairly concentrated solutions for TLC spotting, which is very good, it means we'll have to spot a little bit less than we might if they were more dilute. Here we've got our orange red uh, with again some particulate. Yellowish orange here for number five. And again a white translucent for number six. Now we have the same solvent system here that we've already dissolved our known components. 
right? So this is acetyl salicylic acid or aspirin. So we're going to use these four knowns, right? These are the active ingredients for all of our unknown mixtures here. We're going to spot those on our first plate, and then we're going to spot our unknown solutions onto two additional plates and compare and contrast the RF values. You've talked about RF values with your TA already in the pre-lab lecture. So the next thing we're going to do is start creating or putting together our TLC plate. Once we've done that, we'll go through our spotting technique. So before we can spot any of our plates, we have to construct our plate or put it together. We've got our TLC. This is a plastic plate. I don't know if you can see the reflection on the back of that. Mm -hmm. So that is a smooth plastic plate. And on the front, it has silica gel embedded on the front of it. And that's going to be our stationary phase. And what we're going to do is we're going to spot our different solutions on top of that silica gel. But we have to figure out exactly where we need to do our spotting. So we measure up about one centimeter from the bottom of the plate. This will be the bottom of our plate. I've indicated plate number one, and I'm constructing this, or I'm putting it together to match what we see on our data sheet. So this is our first plate that has ibuprofen, acetaminophen, caffeine, and aspirin. So we're gonna have four lanes that we're gonna create. So we draw our origin line with a dull pencil right at one centimeter. And then we're going to put four lanes, just with small x's, across that origin line. First one being ibuprofen, then acetaminophen, caffeine, and aspirin. So these x's, those are the positions that we're going to spot our sample solutions. I've also made a small mark here at the top of the plate, which indicates where our solvent front line, this is when our solvent moves up our silica gel plate, we're going to pull it out of the developing chamber once the solvent line reaches this one centimeter mark. That puts us one centimeter from the top of the plate. We cannot let our solvent system run all the way to the top of the plate, otherwise it negates any findings or any data that we would get from this experiment. So the next thing we need to do is spot our known components. We've constructed all three of our plates. We've got our known components on plate one. We've got unknown one, two, and three on plate two, and then four, five, and six on plate number three. We're going to start off by spotting plate number one with our known analgesic components. So we're going to do ibuprofen in our first lane. So let's go ahead and take our ibuprofen, which is already in solution. I'm going to take a new unused spotter pipette. Very important that we do that. We don't want to mix any of these. And I'm just going to put that capillary into our solution. Can we see, maybe if we do it against the black background, can we see our capillary action here? This is our solution. Mm -hmm. Now the way that I'm going to spot this, I'm going to move this out of the way. is I'm going to spot directly on top of my X. I'm going to spot just for a second, and then I'm going to let up. If I were to keep the capillary down, contacted with the silica gel, then that spot would spread out to a very wide diameter, and we don't want to do that. We want to keep our solution, and more importantly, the compound dissolved in the solution, in a tight spot right on that X. So we do a spot, then release, and we can blow on the plate, to help that solvent evaporate. Then we'll do another spot. Blow on the plate. And then another spot. Now with ibuprofen, it is fairly difficult to see, so we're gonna spot twice. We're gonna go with two capillaries full. We'll do it again. Spot. And hopefully you can see the dark circle that appears, which slowly disappears as that solvent evaporates. Now 
and I'm just blowing on it to help evaporate that solvent. The larger the diameter of that spot, the larger the diameter of the spot that we're going to see on our TLC plate, we're going to have a blurred or smeared spot. So we've got to try and keep this as contained as possible. And there we go. Now I'm going to take that spotter and set it aside. And I'll set my ibuprofen aside as well. I don't want to mix any of these things up. Next up is acetaminophen. So here we are. And let's do the same thing. Now acetaminophen shows up very nicely on the TLC plate, so I'm only going to have to spot this one time, or one capillary's worth. And we're going to use our UV light in just a minute to check to make sure that all of our spots are visible before we develop this plate. Okay, so that's our acetaminophen. Next up is caffeine. Again, using a new spotter. And there we go. Last but not least is acetyl salicylic acid or aspirin. In our final lane here. And there we go. So that is our spotting technique for plate number one. Let's take it over to our UV lamp and make sure that we can see very clearly all the spots for our compounds. show up okay yeah okay so we can see that our ibuprofen is fairly light fairly light compared to the others we see clear and distinct spotting of our compounds here so they're all at the starting line ready to go we'll go ahead and put our developing chamber together and run this plate and see what we get so we finished spotting our plate our first plate with our known components analgesic components now we've got to set up our solvent chamber, our developing chamber for our TLC experiment. We're going to be using a 100 mil beaker, a watch glass, and 5 milliliters of 0.5% acetic acid in ethyl acetate. That's going to be our developing solution, our mobile phase. So we have our solid phase or our uh, stationary phase, which is our silica gel. Our mobile phase will be our acetic acid in ethyl acetate. So we take our five mils, pour it into the bottom of our 100 mil beaker. We'll put the uh, watch glass on last, 
we carefully pick up our plate as we want to set this down as straight as possible in our solution. We want our mobile phase moving up and parallel to the bottom of the plate so that we don't have any skewing of our, uh, our different lanes. I'm going to go ahead and put my watch glass on top to hold that vapor in. And we're going to watch the solvent make its way up the plate. Once it reaches our solvent line at the top, one centimeter from the top of the plate, we'll pull it out, mark that solvent line, and visualize our results using our UV lamp. All right, our solvent front has reached our mark. So we're gonna go ahead and take our plate out of the solution, out of the developing chamber. And then we're gonna mark our solvent line with a pencil very lightly, just right across the top. We're gonna to let this dry for a couple of minutes to make sure and all of our solvent has evaporated, and then we'll visualize the results under the UV lamp. So our solvent is dried, and we're ready to visualize our spots using our UV lamp. We're using a shortwave lamp. We're gonna go ahead and turn it on, and we see that our plate glows green, and our individual compounds, our components that are embedded on the silica gel, are a, uh, a dark purple or dark black against the green background. So we can see very clearly our ibuprofen spot that goes down to lane number one. We have our acetaminophen here. Caffeine is the, uh, the one that traveled the least amount uh, in our solvent system. And then we have aspirin, which is just a little bit below our ibuprofen here on the right-hand side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure the distance from my solvent line to the origin, solvent line to the origin, 3.5 centimeters. We'll come over to our data sheet and we'll start filling it out. We have our solvent line and I'm going to write next to it 3.5 centimeters. We'll go back to our plate and we're going to measure from the center of the individual spots back to the origin. So if I take the center of this ibuprofen spot, we're looking at roughly 3.2 centimeters. Go back to our data sheet. I'm going to draw in my spot for ibuprofen, and I'll say 3.2 centimeters. We'll come back and take a look at our acetaminophen, measuring again from the center of our spot. We're looking at 2.2 centimeters. So our acetaminophen, 2.2 centimeters. Our caffeine, center of this spot to the origin line, 0.9 centimeters. Caffeine, 0 0.9 centimeters. And last but not least, we have our aspirin. Our aspirin from the center of this spot is going to be right at 2.9, 2.9 centimeters just below our ibuprofen, 2.9 centimeters. 
and there's our first plate complete. Remember that you're going to have to be calculating the RF values using both the solvent front measurement and the individual measurements that we made for each of our known components. Now we're going to go back and spot all of our unknowns, all six, and compare those RF values to our starting known components. All right, so now we're going to set up our unknown plates, one through six, three on each individual plate. We've mixed up our solutions, of course. We did that in the very beginning of the video. I'm going to go ahead and spot these on the plate. Now these are fairly concentrated solutions, so I'm just going to do a single tap per lane, and that's all we're going to need. Then I'll move to a new capillary, go to the second tube, Unknown number three. Move on to the second plate, unknown number four. Number five. And last but not least, number six. All right, so we've got these spotted and ready. Let's check to make sure that they're concentrated enough for us. We're going to use our UV lamp, and we're just looking for a concentrated dark purple or dark uh, black spot on the origin line. And we see that these look very good, so they're ready to be developed. We'll go ahead and refill the solvent chamber and put them in to develop. All right, we're ready to develop our first plate of unknowns. We'll go ahead and place them in the developing chamber just as we did our known components. Set them down as straight as possible. Put our watch glass on top and wait for our solvent line to make its way to the top. Checking our solvent line, we find that it hasn't quite reached the top yet, so we'll place our plate back in and let it develop for just a little bit longer. All right, our solvent line has reached our mark about a half a centimeter from the top of our plate. We'll remove it gently. Go ahead and mark the line. And we'll set it aside to dry. In the meantime, we'll put in our second plate and allow that to develop.
our second plate of unknowns is now finished developing. We'll go ahead and take it out, mark the line, and allow it to dry. While that's drying, we'll go ahead and take a look at our first plate of unknowns under the UV light. All right, so our first plate of unknowns has finished drying, and we've gone ahead and visualized it under the UV lamp. You can make this out. I've circled the midline of each one of these spots. So for unknown number one, this is something different than what we saw in our first plate of known co uh, components, is that we just had a singular spot representing caffeine, acetaminophen, aspirin, and ibuprofen. Now we're seeing mixtures. So for unknown number one, we've got three components, three individual spots, and we're gonna have to measure the midline of each of those from the origin to the midline. First things first, though, so let's go ahead and measure the origin line to our solvent front, and that's going to be right at 3.5. We'll come over to our data sheet. 3.5 centimeters. Now we're going to measure the spots for unknown number one. Our top spot comes in right at 2.9. Our middle spot right at 2.2. .2. and our bottom spot at 0.9. And that's good for our three spots of unknown number one. Let's take a look at unknown number two. We've got two spots here. Measure this one from the midline. We're at 2.2. Bottom spot is right at 0.9, and those numbers sound very familiar. Now let's look at unknown number three. We've just got a single spot, and that single spot measures out at 2.2 for unknown number three. Just like you did for the first plate, you'll use these values to calculate the RF values for plate number two and all of the components contained in these mixtures. Let's move on to our third plate. Third plate has unknown number four, five, and six. And we'll do the same thing that we did for the other two plates. First, we'll measure our solvent line. That comes out at 3.5. For unknown number one, we see only one spot, and that's up very close to the top here. And that's coming out at about, if I measure from the midline, I'm going to go ahead and circle in the midpoint of these spots. And this is so that I can visualize them after the light has been turned off. But if I look at the midpoint, I'm at 3.2. So for unknown number four, we've got a single spot at 3.2 centimeters. For unknown number five, we've actually got two spots. The top spot is 3.2. The bottom spot is right at about 0.8. And that's good for unknown number five. Number six has got two spots. The top spot measures in at 2.9. The 
The bottom spot measures in right at two. So 2.0 centimeters. So this is all the data that you'll need to calculate the RF values for your known components. You'll place that in the bottom portion of your sheet here. All six of your unknown mixtures that you're then going to identify using the table provided on the first page of your lab report. You'll write out the individual RF values here and here. Use that to identify the components contained within each one of these unknown mixtures. That's all you're going to need to write up your lab report. Good luck.